Ruam. I want to give all the praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakudash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Mosa for teaching me the truth. Also, want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth and Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Um, I haven't even chose a, a subject, a chapter yet, but I just knew I wanted to get one in. The spirit's on me. <clears throat> Let me see. All right, let's do the spirit. Let's just go to Daniel 12. And one it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book all right so if you're written in the book you're going to be delivered it's not everyone's written in the book only prophecy says only one third of israel is the elect is the chosen is the is the uh the ones that'll be delivered, right? Delivered from what? Delivered from Jacob's trouble, which ultimately is going to end with World War III, nuclear fire, okay? And it's Jacob's trouble because, listen, our people are going to catch the most hell during, that's why it's called Jacob's trouble, all right? You're going to see judgment going out on the tribes, you know, the, the two-thirds, Great judgment is going to come upon the, the people of Israel, the so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans. It's punishment. You know, we're still under the curses. And if you're not under the hedge of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and you're not, you know, receiving this truth that we've been out on the streets, street corners preaching, then guess what? You're not going to, you're not going to have protection during Jacob's trouble. Uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7. <clears throat> Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be, he shall be saved out of it, right? Just like we read in Daniel. See? And there shall be a time of trouble in the middle of that first verse, such as there never was since... There was a nation even to that same time. And we're talking about the we're talking about a trouble that's that's gonna be dealt with in martial law, right? You're gonna have martial law, you're gonna have troops, military troops in the street corners, uh, you know, everybody because what it is, think about it, they're gonna be those laws, the, the micro C hip law is gonna be enforced. You're gonna have you're gonna have, you know, uh, Esau's military trying to put that micro C hip and enforce that law on people. And if they're not, guess what? And a lot of Jake's not going to take that. You know, a lot of Jake is going to take the chip, the C the C H I P, but a lot of them are not going to take it. So it's going to be a, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lots of chaos when that, when that time comes. Right. <clears throat> so let, let me go to, uh, what was, what's through the spirit? What was I going to grab? Let me see. Um, I'll, 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 it'll come back to me. I, I forgot. About, oh yeah. So yeah, I, I mentioned that it just came back. I mentioned that um, you know the uh, there's going to be a hedge on the people, the chosen people, right? The elect, especially the prophets, right? This is this is what will occur when when the prophets. Are uh, in you know, and there's going to be situations where it's going to be miracles and di divin divine authority, div divination taking place, right? Spiritual powers, spiritual things are going to be taking place during this time of Jacob's trouble. If you're of the elect, and if, especially if you're of one of the prophets, you know, 
it's going to Isaiah 59 and 19 it says so, so shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him right so you know when we become oppressed in that time you know there's going to be instances where you're going to have Right here, what we just read, the Spirit of the Lord is going to lift the standard against the enemy. Who's the enemy? The enemy is going to be that military that's going to be trying to, you know, put violence on you, put um, enforce their law with violence and enforce their law with great force, right? And just think about it. You know a lot of Jake is going to be resistant to that, um, to that micro sea hip. Even some of the Edomites will be resistant to that. But Jake, they always follow Esau to what he says and what he's, he does, and they follow his laws and rules. That's why they were taking the the, the, the uh, jab shot, the, the jab shot, the jump shot, <laughs> the jab. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The Dr. Fauci, ouchie. You see, we got all kind of code names for that, that vaccination. Okay, so <clears throat> what, uh, let's see. Um... Lost my train of thought. What was I gonna grab? Well, so that's that flood, though, is what I was saying. You know, that flood it comes in, and if you are you have the spirit of Yahweh Shai, the Lord's gonna lift up a standard against the enemy. Meaning, you know, it's, if you're one of those prophets and the Lord or the Lord gives you those powers, you know, the military come in, you you could do whatever you know deem necessary spiritually, where it, you know gets you out of that situation you know there's going to be miracles and and things happening that are not going to be easily explained you see and only the faith have the the the, the ability to believe this this truth right what we're reading and what i'm saying <clears throat> so let's see and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some everlasting life, some shame, and some of everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as brightness of the firmament, and they that run, or I'm sorry, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Alright, so if you're if you're a true prophet of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, you're gonna be planting good uh, seed, planting good fruits, you know. You're that tree that bears fruits, good fruits. And we're not talking about the Christianity, you know, passing the those. Think about it. If you're a Christian person or you're a Christian, so-called Christian, and you're out there teaching uh, that Jesus Christ is the salvation, and you're teaching that uh, Yahweh, well, you say God, right? If you're a Christian, you don't call him Yahweh. Christians call the Most High uh, God, right? So, like... If you're a so-called Christian, you're pushing that so-called God and so-called Jesus, prosperity, love everybody, everybody can be saved, uh, doctrine, right? Then this don't apply to you. You're not tur turning people to righteousness. You're you're, and a lot of you are unknowingly teaching corrupt doctrine, teaching lies. Because you gotta understand, it's a such the Lord puts such strong delusion on on these people in these false doctrines that their intentions they really believe they're doing the the right thing, right? And why not? That's what they've been taught, you know. But it's the elect, the prophets, you know, and the ones who believe the Lord's men, the prophets. That's the elect who's actually the you know counted as righteous, right? Let's get this real quick. Let me get this. Uh, just because, uh, <clears throat> let me see, the Spirit bringing this verse to me. <clears throat> oh yeah, and I'm doing an experiment because I'm using my other phone for my, for my uh, lessons because uh, they've been cutting off on my other phone i don't know why but the videos have cut me off right in the middle of the lesson so let's go to uh because remember the true doctrine of true men turning people to righteousness are the ones who are in the right doctrine you got to be pushing 100 truth 
Because if you have, like like the elders always say, if you only got 99%, that 1%, you're, you're, you're going off. You're, hey, guess what? You're, you become a false prophet and you're, you're not teaching righteousness. You got to be 100% on point. You got to be perfect like Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai are. Okay. Um, let me see. Second Ezra. Eight. 32. For if thou hast desire to have mercy upon, or no, this ain't even it. I went to the wrong one. Salakia. Second is just 862, rather. It says, well, let's read, let's read back to, well, I'll start at 60. It says, but they which have, be, which, which be created, have defiled the name of him that made them and were unthankful to him which prepared life for them, right? Yahweh and really he he gave he gave the heathen life, you know, mortal lives, right? He gives Israel um you know immortal lives, which the two thirds they're still in the flesh. So that when when I say immortal, I'm talking about you there's gonna be some that never die according to the scripture. Right, we'll grab that, Lord's will. But he prepared life for, for uh, you know, of course he gives, the, like I said, he gave the heathen mortal temporal lives. He gave Israel immortal life through the scriptures, the so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans. And you don't necessarily look, have to look like a so-called black, light, Latino, and Native American to be one of us, but because, you know... Our, our seed look like all the nations where we've been scattered. And now Babylon, you have all the nations here together. So a lot of our seed, a lot of our kids, they look like the heathen nations. You know, and really when you get technical, uh, I'm not going to get too deep on that. Let me, I'm, I'm all over the place. Let me stay focused right here. So it says, and therefore is my judgment now at hand. These things have I not showed unto all men but unto thee and a few like thee then answered I and said behold behold O Yahweh now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times but at what time hast th thou hast not showed me right so look he didn't tell him when it was going to happen just like he didn't tell nobody Yahweh never told any any of the prophets not even Yahweh Shai you know when the end would be what well, he didn't give him an exact date right so um but the point is is yahweh showed like in verse 62 i'm going to read it again he showed the end to 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 who to the prophets right that's why we're out here that's why i'm doing this video that's why i'm telling you what how esau is going to come down on a, a you know great wrath with great wrath and he's going to come in like a flood, even in our households, right? Some, I mean, there's going to be times where we can, may have to go off the grid. Who knows, right? But the Spirit's going to move the elect and, and keep us, you know, preserved according to the Spirit, right? So, but the point being, A, the Lord's prophets, he showed these things to. It says right here. These things have I show, not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, okay, so he said, you show me all the wonders of the last times, but you didn't show, tell me when it was going to happen, right? And that's that's beyond, you know, that's beyond any of the prophets, including Yahushai knowledge, right? But Amos, might as well bring it out, Amos 3 and 7. Surely Yahweh the Most High will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets, right? So, the prophets are, are listen, it's a spirit on so-called black men, Latino, and Native Americans, because, hey, for all of us to be on this same spirit and doing what we're doing, <laughs> hey, that's, uh, that's call halal Yahweh b'ashem Shai, right? So hey, let's let's read it. That's what it is, man. The the prophets, we have the the view, we have the vision, we have the knowledge. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. It's on us. Um, Daniel twelve, 
and two. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. I'm sorry, I was already. I'm already on Salakia. I was on Barren on verse three. All right, so we're the, we're the ones who are going to turn many to righteousness because we're why we hold the 100% truth, the 100% doctrine. One of the Christians bringing out the verses that we're bringing out in context through the Spirit, by the Spirit, right? Call all y'all, Bashem Yashai, is 144. All right, <clears throat> one fo fo. All right, let's get uh, number four, verse four. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and the seal of the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run and to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. All right. So now, now, now it was commanded to, from Daniel to to seal the book, right? Meaning, you know, it, it, this this truth that we're speaking on today, it it was uh, held back for a while because it was sealed. And remember, Daniel was before Yahweh Shai, so Yahweh Shai came on the scene. And he wa he walked in that in the spirit perfectly, right? The whole time he was in the flesh, he was in the spirit. Think about that. That's that's freaking that's crazy to think, right? But we can't think because our our ways, our thoughts are not Yahweh's, right? So we're you know we're not on the same level. So it's not for us to question that, right? If Yahweh wanted to make a perfect man and perfect in his flesh and the spirit, and he did that, right? And he can do it because why? He's the most high. He can do whatever the fuck he wants, right? Like quoting the brother Halakia, right? Let me see. Um, we go to Daniel again. So the point being, Yahweh shows it to a few men, not all men, Right? And then I wanted to grab how, like, because we read that the, um, he was, Daniel was told to seal the book until the end, right? And guess why Revelation 5, and I'll start at 1, it says, and I saw, this is talking about the book being, um, the seals being broken, the ones that were sealed by Daniel, Right? We're told to seal the book, and guess what? Revelation five, and this is is probably a, a good indicator that Daniel is John the Revelator. All right, through the Spirit, because he told him in one lifetime, seal the book, and then he told him in his, you know, in the lifetime of John the Revelator, hey, you don't worry about. It. We're about to read it. I mean, let's read it. And I saw five and one. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel. See, those are those seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. So John was like, dang, we can't break the seals, right? He was having, he started crying, right? That's how sad he was and, and sorrowful. So, uh, and verse five, it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. Right? And there it was. So Yahweh Shai, he's the one who because of him the seals were were uh, were um were broken. Meaning we were when you have a book and it's sealed and you can't read it. But then when you have a book and, and the seal you break the seals and you open up, but I'm thinking of my Bible when I first bought it, I remember I had to break a seal. You see? I had to, I had to take it out the box. Right, if a if a book is 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 just wrapped up and and, and seals on it and, and you know what I'm saying and like it might even have a, some book they got the big old storage for the big books back in the day where they had locks and shit you had to get all, all you had to do all kind of stuff just to access the book right but Yahweh Shai guess what he's that he's that one who's worthy to uh, break them seals so now when we break the seals of a book 
Now you can read it. Now you can, the spirit of understanding is put on us in these last days. And it all comes together like Lord Yahweh had ordained it, right? So anyway, let me go back to Daniel. So Daniel was told to seal it. And then in Revelation, we were told, oh, you know, there was one worthy to, to open the seals on the book, which that's Yahweh Shai. That's why his prophets in this age, right? Let me get that because you got skeptical people out there. They're like, oh shit, he, there's no prophets in this age, right? So let's debunk that right quick. De wisdom of Solomon 7 and 12, but being one, it's talking about wisdom, but being one, she can do all things, and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new, and in all ages, entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of the Most High and prophets. It says in all ages, there's going to be prophets and friends of them, because that's another word for the, a prophet. Another word you can call the prophet is a friend of the Most High, a friend of Yahweh, right? And a friend is almost, when you really go and dive deep in that word, it means brother. So we're really, you know, we're, we're like, uh, we're Yahweh Shai's, he's our big brother, right? And Yahweh's obviously the father, but we're friends, you see? And we're in all ages. So you, you, you Christians, you, you run us right away, right away want to say there ain't no prophets, there ain't no men of, of the Lord. That was all of, of the ancient time. Well, you, you know what I'm saying? You guys are off. You guys don't know the Bible. The Bible says there are prophets in every age. All right? Daniel. And that's okay. It's not for you to know. Daniel 12, like we read earlier, he told Ezra, only have, have I shown this truth to a few men. Right? He didn't show it to everybody. All right? Daniel 12 and... Um, where am I at? Daniel 12 and... Uh, five. <clears throat> then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood... Or, I'm sorry, I skipped four. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Right? So, even during the Jacob's trouble, people are going to be running around looking for the word... But they won't be able to find the word because the prophets won't be on the streets. Do you think in the time of martial law, full-fledged martial law, where military uh, troops are enforcing laws and, and, and trying to put CHIPs in people, you know? You think we're going to be able just to be casually on the street or doing our thing? Hell no. The Esau, at that, in that day, Esau, like right now, he's making laws against the anti-Semitism laws to, to try and you know, harm and and uh, viol and would make it to where our our preaching on the streets is a violation, right? Against his laws. But the thing is, is um, you know, when they start really cracking down, and they're going to use all kinds of stuff against us. They're going to about the, the preaching. They're going to use the the fact that we're not in in uh, we're not in line. You know, doing their taking their jump shots not in line taking their micro c hips you see there's going to be a day when you're going to you're not going to be able to be out there teaching and we know this and why do we know this because the scriptures speaks on that too right amos 9 is it 11 no is it amos 3 and 9 i always forget amos let me see Okay, this is it right here. I thought, okay, I was close. Uh, it's Amos 8 and 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, the Most High, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. And they sh see, so that's what it is. The famine of the words is going to kick in. A lack of bread, lack which the bread is the, the truth. Right? Our daily bread. So you ain't going to have the prophets on the streets preaching this 100% truth, 100% true doctrine. And people are going to be like, oh my God, losing their minds. There's going to be people that want to know the truth in that day. They want to know what the Bible says. But guess what? They, 
it's too late. Now, now it's like, okay, you're on your own. You're probably going to catch judgment. If you are, you know what I mean? If you're not in that hedge of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, you're probably just going to catch judgment before you, you even get to be close to one of the Lord's prophets, right? Because there's going to be a famine of the word. You ain't going to have no YouTube. You ain't going to have the elders. You ain't going to have all the brothers, you know, videos to learn and, and watch, you know, because why? You didn't gather that oil when you were supposed to be gathering it. That's a parable too. You see? The five virgins that gathered the oil and prepared, but then the five virgins that they 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 <laughs> they didn't worry about the oil, which oil is a metaphor for wisdom. You see? Alright, where am I? At? Okay, so let's keep reading. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from to and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro and seek the word of Yahweh and shall not find it. Right. You're not going to find the Lord's prophets. You're not going to find what the Bible says. You're not even if you have a Bible, you won't understand it. Why? Because you are too stupid, too ignorant, too wicked to listen to to the prophets when we were on the streets. Okay? And this is the this is how it is, man. This is the prophecy. This is what's we're this is what we're about to walk into, you know? Lord's will, it's sooner than we think cuz the brothers, the men who are in the right mindset, you really yearning for the kingdom right now you're the babylon vexes your spirit man straight up <laughs> when you get in this knowledge you're gonna gain that sorrow you're gonna gain that vexation you're gonna be like in the right mindset right ecclesiastes 1 and 18 for in much wisdom is much grief and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow the more you know the more you're gonna hurt the more you're gonna you're gonna grief Right, you're gonna grieve, I should say. Right, you're gonna be sitting there like, damn, like you be at work just listening to the conversations of the wicked and just be like, damn, these motherfuckers like are psh, they're way off, right? The heathen, the two thirds. I mean, come on, you put them together and they're just the wicked together, you know. You, you listen to their conversations, it vexes you like it vexed Lot. It says that in the scriptures that, and it, you know. Brothers who are on this truth who are diligent, they, this is a verse we know easy, right? But a lot of you newcomers, you people, you Israelites, maybe maybe of the elect, because you start to repent, you start to, you know, believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you know. This is a, a dime for you, you know, for the newcomers. And, you know, uh, even Elder Apostle Tahar and Gobar they, and, and uh, Ramlab, they, they'll go in on, uh, you know, going back to the basics. <clears throat> and I, I like even though it is vexing when you're like on this subject vexing vexed by the conversation of the wicked it's uh it's 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 nice because you like you first of all this all happens you, you be at work and then you hear the heathen the two-thirds talking and you're like, but you're like, ugh, you bothered by it, right? Whatever they're, they're always talking about stupid shit, right? Filthy shit, useless shit, vanity. And then you get that feeling of like, ugh, these motherfuckers are done, right? And then, then you remember the scripture, and then you, you think like, oh, call all y'all by Shemuel Shai. I'm vexed, just like the forefather Lot. He, there's like he was vexed. I'm vexed. You see? And then you feel like, hey, I'm in good company, you know. Lord's will, I'm of the elect. Lord's will, I'm in that number. You see, but let's let's uh, that's how it is when you when you think about it. Second Peter two and seven it says, and I and delivered just lot meaning righteous lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See, so that's how it is for when you're in this knowledge and this truth. You are vexed by just about almost just about everything. Be your family. It could be women. It could be, you know what I'm saying. It, it, there's a lot of vexing things in, in Babylon, and we're right in the middle of it. <clears throat> and that's why we got to be delivered, man. Because this place is. Come on, man. Be real with yourself. You think you're like you think Yahweh meant it for us to just go to work every every day and barely, you know. Have time to, to do things that you actually want to do. And, you know, you can't even really enjoy your kids if you have kids, you know. 
and then you got sicknesses, you know, your body's, uh, you know, weak at times. And you, this is what you people really believe you want. This is your forever. This is you, this is your uh, dwelling place you never want to end. Come on, man. Let me see. That's why we're like what I'm reading about Jacob's trouble and uh, and the, and you know the the tough times that like that, that we're gonna be walking into. We want to get this thing on and pop in so that we can get to the kingdom, right? Um. Let me see, Daniel 12 and 5. And I also read, so they're going to be running to and fro for the truth and the knowledge. And guess what? They're not going to find it. Oh, and I should have read the rest of that Amos. So like, yeah, there was a verse on I wanted to read. It says, they shall, all, I read this, but I'm going to read 13. And they shall, this is 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh and shall not find it. You see? Because when this martial law comes and, and the, the, the flood is on the streets, meaning Esau's military, and even foreign troops, right? The UN, when they're doing all their dirt in the and you know trying to put sea hips on everybody and, and or trying to just kill Israelites, so it's going to be like the Wild West martial law, right? It's going to be crazy, man. The word they're going to look for the word they won't find it, man. The prophets won't be on the streets, right? Verse thirteen: In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst, right? Thirst of what? Thirst of this truth. Because this this truth is is uh, is also attributed to uh, to water, right? The living waters, the 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 running living waters, the scripture, flowing water, right? So let's go back to Daniel twelve and five. And then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two, the one. On this side in the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river and one man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river how long shall it be to the end of those wonders and I heard a man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river and he held up his right hand and his left hand and remember we don't get that answer how long to the end how long you know till it be shall these end of these wonders you don't get the answer, just like he told Ezra. That was that you know that was uh, one thing that is not going to be sealed, unsealed, which is the end, and no one had, knows the day or the hour as it is written. Um, but let me keep reading verse five. Um, oh, I'm sorry, verse. I'm at verse seven. It says. And swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time and a half and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people and all these things be finished. So see, this is talking, he didn't even understand, right? It's talking about, listen, all this stuff has to happen. The, these, the Israelites got to be driven into many countries, scattered into many countries, Right? All kind of stuff still had to happen. The, the, the time of Daniel obviously was not the the time of the end, right? Um, let's get this real quick. <clears throat> Let me just get this. Daniel. He was in the... Because Daniel, he was in the time of, um, of Babylon. Ancient Babylon, right? Daniel was in the time of ancient Babylon, right? And so now we're in the time, we're in the captivity, which is slavery, during the time of American captivity, the American Babylon the Great, Mystery Babylon, right? 
And remember, the Lord shows his secrets to his prophets. Another word for secret is mystery. That's why we know exactly where we are, man. We know we're in Babylon. And when you're, when you're really in the spirit, you just be looking at all these people like when you're getting vexed, you know, by all the different conversations of the wicked, by all the things you see, the, the actions of the people, right? When you just sit back and observe it, and you'll be like, damn, this is fucking Babylon, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just really, you just know, man. This place is Babylon the Great, for sure. And this is where all that, this is where Jacob trouble is going to occur, man, in Babylon the Great. You fucking blacks, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, you think you fucking going to get out of here scot-free? You're going to get fucked up. The Lord's going to fuck up the, the, the his own people. So why would he not fuck up the, the heathen? You know? Verse 8, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, Oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Right? So he heard what was... He, he saw the visions. He still didn't understand it. But he saw it and he was documented it, right? And now we're in a time because it's, he said, well, let's read this, right? Well, he said in verse 4, shut up the wor words and seal the book even to the time of the end, right? And now that's how you really know we're in the end because for the Lord's men to know this uh, prophecy, to understand the Bible, we're out here this is a sign of the end. The Lord's men having understanding the way we do now. Right? The 144,000. You so-called black, Latino, Native American men who are out there prophesying in Babylon the Great. And you're in, in with knowledge and understanding. Right? Like Jeremiah 3 and 15. The Yahweh, Yahweh says, I shall... Let me get it. <clears throat> Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. See? The Lord gave, gave who? Gave Israel pastors who had understanding given with, with his, his heart, meaning his mind. Like-minded with Yahweh. That's what his prophets are. are, are we're like-minded. We're in the same mindset. Why? Because he's given us his servants, the prophets, all his secrets, all his mysteries. Right At the time, he didn't even give it to Daniel because it said Daniel didn't even understand the vision that he saw, right? Let me read it again just so you, th you, you, know, you think we're talking shit about Daniel, but that's what it says. And I heard, but I understood not. See, he says he under didn't understand it. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for these for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Right? So now he's telling Daniel, look, you ain't this ain't the time for you to understand all this. Just write it down. Right? And Yahweh Shai hadn't come. Yahweh Shai came, and guess what? We had that vision of John the Revelator where he said, Oh shoot, th there was one who was worthy to loosen the seals on the book, which that was Yahweh Shai. Okay, verse 10, many shall be purified, made white, right? And white is a, a symbol, a symbolic for purity, um, you know, holiness, um, you know, bl uh, no blemishes, uh, you know, pure. So who's made, made pure? Who, what makes us pure? What makes us clean, right? White is clean. If you have a white t-shirt, you go in and you get dirt, get it dirty, you wash it up and it's white again, right? That's how that's how this truth this is what it does to us. It makes us clean. It makes us this is what we're talking about, that metaphor of many are purified, right? Psalms let me see, what is it? 119, 11 maybe? Nope. 111, 19. No. I mean, I don't remember which one. See, that's why we gotta be diligent, because there's a lot of verses. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Psalm 119.11. All right. I, I, what did I do? I thought I had that. Psalm 119.9. Okay, 9 and through 11. 
So here it is, 119.9. It says, Beth, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to my word? See, this is what makes us purify. This is what makes us clean. This is what makes us so-called white. And see, that's why the white man associates himself as white instead of Edom, which he's actually the red man. Word Edom means red in Hebrew. So he he calls himself white just to confuse people and just to put that cleansliness, that purification on him, which he's in fact the devil. Remember, the devil is always going to be that deceiver that's going to have things asked backwards. When you have wisdom, you know you can see what it is. When you when you lack wisdom, you 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 know you reject knowledge. So bear with all, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So when we go to Daniel and it says, he tells Daniel, many shall be purified and made white. Mean what? Being cleansed of their wickedness, purged of their wickedness, purified, right? And tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And we had this, this uh, Edomite, <laughs> he was trying to defend uh, the J Jesus Christ gospel, right? But he had no scriptures to back it up. We had to basically give him a spiritual ass whooping yesterday on the street with the scriptures, you know, because all we had to do was read the scripture, read the weapon. And we knew that he wouldn't understand it because why? We know Daniel 12 and 10. None of the wicked shall understand why it's so hard for the, the Edomite to understand this book. You know why? Because it condemns him. So it's it put yourself in his shoes for a minute. And if you were being condemned by something, it would be hard to, it's like a hard pill to swallow, in other words, right? Verse 11. Like he's all, he's all, he feels good when you tell him, oh yeah, bro, your blessing is a sword. You'll hype him up and shit. Yeah, you guys got the best military, the strongest, but guess what? You're also the wicked and you also have no understanding of the scriptures. And we're going to give you a spiritual ass whooping when it comes to the scripture, to the Bible. Because you don't understand it like the Lord puts the spirit on his men. It don't, he don't put it on Esau, right? We always teach uh, the word in uh, Psalm 147 and 19. It says um, that he, Yahweh showeth his word unto Jacob. It don't say he showeth his word to Esau. So we know the truth. And that's why it's easy to whoop your, give you a spiritual ass whooping on, on the street corners because you can't deal with the you can't deal with the Lord's men on the street corners with the verses. You can't. Even the the, the high demon, uh, I'll call him uh, Vocab Malone, the high demon, even he when he tried to get, you know, when he when he he basically you Christians anybody outside of this doctrine, you don't want no smoke when it comes to these scriptures, man. You're better off just, <laughs> just enjoy your day, man, while you can, you know? Instead of, like, like the guy yesterday, he got so upset, man. He And he had his woman there. And it shows you this is even, I'll even make this an observance. It even shows you this is Esau's kingdom. Because his his woman that was with him, she actually had at least the, uh, the, 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 uh, the knowledge to just stay quiet. Which that's, you Jake women couldn't, wouldn't have been able to do that stayed quiet while uh, while their man was uh, you know in the middle of a catching smoke <laughs> and that's all he did he saw that's all he did was he caught a lot of smoke go watch the the prophets on the street yesterday and you'll see what i'm talking about right he didn't have nothing for us and he he was so upset screaming at the top of his lungs he was white skin right because he was an edomite and his face started turning red right which his true color is that's his the edomite is really a red man he's not a white man so you know, he's over there turning red in his in his in his face, and then like trying to defend Jesus Christ bullshit, spit saliva like coming out of his mouth to the point I had to tell him to back up. You know, he's about to spit on the brothers and stuff. So it's like Esau losing his mind, man, on the behalf of these scriptures. And you know that dude's gonna lose sleep at night, and he may even lose his woman because she just saw him basically. Like I said, to her credit, she stayed quiet the whole time. And just watched her man get, you know, beat down spiritually. Because why? Because none of the wicked shall understand this truth, man. And if you can't understand and you're an Israelite, then you are part of the wicked, you know, by default. And we, 
We don't give a fuck about the the wicked. Not even if you're the you're the the, the Israel, the wicked of Israel, because we know even our people are two thirds of the wicked too. That's the majority of our people are wicked. Okay. Um. Where are we at? And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety nine days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to a thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Right? <clears throat> so there was a time frame, and Yahweh will give you a time frame right there, right? And let's read uh, verse 13. It says, But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Right? Meaning, he told Daniel, Listen, you're going to die, but guess what? When you're but when you, when you uh, which that means the rest, right? Thou shall rest. That's why they say rest in peace, right? In verse 10, 13, it says, and stand in thy lot. And what's his lot? If you're a prophet and you're, and you're born, when you're born again, you're, you're going to, you're going to catch that spiritual um, blessing. You know, that, that uh, wisdom is going to enter your holy soul. If you're a prophet in that, and that's going to be your lot. And that's why we know through the spirit, through the understanding that the prophets are always reincarnated, coming back as the prophets, right? That's why we believe, you know, we have a good feeling that, that Abba Bivens was uh, um, John the Baptist, right? Spoken of in, in Malachi, right? Or Elijah, you know, we, we, and it, you know, we don't, he doesn't speak on it and really we don't really speak on it often. But, you know, through the Spirit, there's a good chance that Apostle Tahar is, is Paul, right? So, you know, but that's not something that we, we, we sit there and spend a lot of time on, you know. But, but uh, you have to be really spiritual, um, blessed, and involved. And you have to have that fervent spirit and fervent heat on you, you know, diligence. To really be able to believe that, but the but at the same time, hey, the elect. If you're of the elect, that's not hard to believe, and you receive it easily, right? I have no problem telling you that I believe uh, Apostle Tahar is is Paul, right? But anyway, verse thirteen. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. So he was telling Daniel, you know what? You're going to be in your lot at the end of days. You're going to be doing your thing in the end. Of day. You'll be a prophet teaching remember we read that the prophets are in all ages all right so you know this spirit was brought to you by the spirit and power of yahweh bahashem yahweh shai you know want to give thanks to the elder apostles for teaching us the truth want to acknowledge all the akiyam who are out there pushing the truth with with uh, truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the work of the earth and uh, shalom to the hopeful elect, all right? And I hope the lesson was edifying. Shalom, shalom.